Let's now uh, go over to our Cape Town studio where we're joined by Janine van Sale, who is Senior Industrial Analyst at Old Mutual uh, Investment Group. And uh, she's uh, looking, looking at equities for them. Uh, to discuss that Woolworths buyout, we uh, talked a great deal yesterday about their decision to uh, buy out the minority shareholders at presumably the right price, in particular from uh, Solomon Liu. So what is your view of this deal and the way it's turned out now for Woolworths? Well, it's been almost like an MBA case study. It's been such an interesting deal, this. We do look at the price and think it is quite a rich price. It's a good price for Country Road shareholders. But it's, I think, necessary given that this is really blocking the David Jones deal, which is a far larger deal. If we look at the price itself, it's a roughly a 25 PE on 12 months earnings which you know we don't really trade our shares that high but then that must be including some of the benefits of the david jones deal so it's presuming what would have accrued to country road had the deal gone through and the mon minority wants to be paid out to that benefit as well and if we look at it on that basis then it's more like a 17 pe and then it's not so ridiculous um, but it is still expensive and i think solomon Liu should be happy with it that's right i mean there was speculation about his intentions but in the end it probably came down to getting the best uh, price what's your sense of the way woolworths handled this because the way they were talking or the media reports anyway and the analyst reports about Solomon Liu was that this really could provide a sticking point but it appears that Woolworths thought and acted pretty swiftly to say let's get him out the way and let's do what we want to do. I think they really behaved quite sensibly in this. They, they have actually been buyers of Country Road for many years but Solomon Liu has never wanted to sell to them at the going price. So they've never really put an offer on the table above the market price. But this really, since it was the, the tri or is the trigger in the deal, I think has just pushed it all to the front of the table. And I think that they dealt with it very swiftly and well. And we'll see now whether the price is good enough. I've just spoken to Woody's management and asked them whether they've had discussions with Solomon Liu. And they said, no, absolutely not. They're not allowed to do that. Because that would then possibly cons be considered as um, collateral it would breach the collateral benefit rule, which, yep. is, which is the big thing that the Australian Securities and Investments Commission is busy watching now, out for. That's the thing to talk about. We talked and that's about the rule just for, yeah. for your listeners. Yeah, we talked about it yesterday. It's where you can't uh, favour one shareholder above another if there's negotiations over price. Apparently, we don't have a rule like that uh, here, although it sounds like a sensible one. Uh, so just to communicate with a shareholder like that would infringe that rule, would it? Well, I think that they, they're treading on thin ice and they don't really know exactly how far they can push it. So rather just not communicate and then see whether or not he accepts the David Jones deal. So now they've put what they can on the table. They also consider the price as being quite rich, pushing the top end of the collateral benefits rule. So they're hoping that the Securities Commission will, ASIC will approve it. And, and then it's really up to uh, Solomon Liu. They, they can't speak to him or they feel that that, that might also be um, infringing the collateral benefit rule. Janine, uh, we know there's always teams of people, and in this case lawyers and analysts and merchant bankers looking after things. It does seem like this is, uh, if you're taking an individual who can be credited, it's Ian Moyer's vision, maybe his deal-making skills, one doesn't know. Uh, he's turning out to be a great asset for Woolworths. I think he has proven to be a great asset just in, in terms of what he's done with Woolworths over the last three years. But it's not just Inmoor, there's a whole team of people working there and I think that he has really mobilized some very smart people around him and everybody's working towards the same goal and that's really what we like to see in management of a company. Yeah, that in itself can improve the valuation of the company just because uh, analysts like yourself are impressed by it. Just remind us now, the, let's say the deal goes through and now how does this change the landscape for Woolworths? What kind of company does it look like now? The balance of power or the balance of earnings, the balance of revenue and what's it going to do for shareholders down the line? Well at the moment we're looking at about 25% of our earnings, slightly less, coming from Australia. So it's not really the tipping point. But after this deal we should look uh, at a top line basis and it all depends on what happens in terms of the synergies that you assume to come through. But on a top line uh, roughly, well, just less than 50% of sales will be coming from Australia. So a South African shareholder would look at it and say, actually, we are getting a little bit of diversification into other um, geographies, which we generally like. Other shareholders 
don't necessarily like it. For example, foreign shareholders who are investing in emerging markets might not find Woolies as attractive because now it's got a fair amount of its sales and earnings will be coming from a non-emerging markets geography. So it depends who you are, whether or not you like this, uh, the new Woolies going forward. But I think the way we look at it is there's a lot to be extracted out of this deal and we do actually believe that Ian Moore has shown us he can do it in previous transactions and I think that it's going to be a hard one this time, it's much bigger, but I think in time they will do it. How are they going to do it uh, in terms of what they do on the ground? One thinks of the MassMart Walmart deal which you must have followed in great detail and uh, there's a view that you know some of the things that might have been expected to come through from the Walmart way of doing things are not yet being seen in MassMart, uh, so one can debate that. Also, South African companies in Australia, I think we think it's going to be easy because we speak the language, we play cricket we play and so on. And actually, it's turned out to be quite tough uh, in Australia. That's quite right. We haven't got a very good track record of uh, South African companies in Australia. Uh, funnily enough, the one that we have had is Country Road and then the purchase of Witchery. So Woolies has actually shown that they've done pretty well in Australia. Um, they're the only other retailer, as far as I know, that really has. Um, and then we also looking with a, at the moment anyway, while the real hard work has to be done, we're looking at Willies with an Australian at the helm. And I think that he thinks that he can do it. He knows the Australian market much better than most of our South Africans. And in fact, he's not sending out a South African team to go and sort it out, which is what often seems to be the case when South Africans tackle Australia. So he is actually using quite a few country road uh, staff members and then people that they've recruited over the year from Maya, from other Australian businesses. And I think that that in itself is an advantage in that he has an Australian perspective and he's not the South African coming in.